Good afternoon. As we celebrate today this 100th anniversary of the presence of the St. Vincent de Paul Society here in the Archdiocese, I will share with you that I've had the unique experience to serve as a priest or a bishop in four different dioceses now. Nobody seems to want me to stay for long. They keep sending me to the next place. But some of the people who best live the gospel are the people that I've met through the St. Vincent de Paul Society. It's quite impressive to me the the absolute pure love that the St. Vincent people express for the least among us. And it's quite an inspiration. And I can tell you as a pastor in a number of different dioceses, in my home diocese of Indianapolis, some of the best go-to people in the parish were the Vincentians. In some of the most difficult and challenging realities. And if there was ever a person that ended up on my doorstep or at the office that I wasn't quite sure of the veracity of their claims and their needs, I knew the Vincentians could ferret it out and provide. And no matter what hour of the day or night I might call them to assist, they were immediately available. Uh, that's quite an honor for the organization. It, it's a badge of honor. I told the deacon before we began that this COVID now has derailed a lot of things, but it's derailed my own ability to continue to get around and get to know this archdiocese as your new archbishop. And one of the organizations I look forward to finally getting to know more about is our St. Vincent de Paul organization. So it's a joy to be here to celebrate this Eucharist with you and this hallmark anniversary of a hundred years of your presence here and more than your presence, your ministry. Because I think the Vincentians also are a beautiful model as the founder, St. Vincent, of what it means to hear the Father say, go into my vineyard and to do so. And the readings today are a call not only to hear the invitation of God to serve in the world on his behalf and to serve in the world conformed more perfectly to his son, Jesus Christ, but the readings are a call to the conversion that gets us to that point. And as we know, we never fully arrive. <laughs> conversion is an ongoing lifelong journey for all of us. Anybody here made it already yet? Okay, good, we're all in the same boat. The prophet Ezekiel puts it in these terms when he says, turn away from wickedness, do what is right and just. I think that's particularly the call the Vincentian volunteer or member gets all the time is to do something that is just, to do what is right. And they respond. St. Paul puts it in different words in his letter to the Philippians today in a very interesting way in asking kind of facetiously 
if there's any encouragement in Christ, if there's any solace in love, if there's any participation in the Spirit, if there's any compassion and mercy, then complete my joy by being of the same mind with the same love. And I believe the Vincentians do just that. They are united in heart, thinking one thing. And they've certainly heard the invitation of St. Paul, which is the invitation and teaching of Jesus to do nothing out of selfishness, nothing out of vain glory, but rather humbly regard others as more important than yourself. Looking out not for your own interests, but for those of others. So my dear Vincentians, thank you for putting on this attitude of Christ, for your service to others as more important than yourself. Not for any glory other than for the glory of God's kingdom. And every one of your acts of love, whether seen or unseen, makes the world a better place. It is advancing the kingdom. It is bearing the fruit of the vineyard of God. I want to close with a summary, or it's not even a summary, it's the conclusion of the introduction to the compendium for the church's social teaching, the Catholic social teaching, that I think is so appropriate for our Sunday readings, and in many ways I think speaks to what the Vincentian spirituality and ministry is accomplishing. And this document concludes the introduction by saying, the church, which is the sign and history of God's love for mankind and of the vocation of the whole human race to unity as children of one father, intends that her social doctrine propose to all people a humanism that is up to the standards of God's plan of love and history which is an integral and solidary humanism capable of creating a new social order founded on the dignity and freedom of every human person, which is brought about in peace, justice, and solidarity. And my friends, each of you in your selfless service of others is demonstrating concretely in history God's love for humankind. You are demonstrating in every act of loving service to one in need that the human race is capable of living up to the standards of God's plan of love in history in our time. This document concludes this introduction by saying, this humanism can become a reality if, if individual men and women and their communities are able to cultivate moral and social virtues in themselves and spread them into society. Then, under the necessary help of divine grace, there will arise a generation of new men and women who will be the molders of a new humanity. And my friends, you are helping to bring that about by modeling the love of Christ, by having the attitude of Christ 
on behalf of this local church. Thank you and keep it up.